we get to the unit here already with screws out. We have the connector in the back for the positive, negative, and the right two, I believe, are the uh, wires for the button triggers. Uh, we have access door up here with a switch associated with it. We have our magazine on either side with a assembly down here. That's actually a, if you see the orange button, it's a two-piece plastic casing that holds its own uh, switch so that you can't fire unless you have both magazines loaded. In theory, you can't fire unless both magazines are loaded. The Depending on where things sit, you can sometimes get to work with just one. But, you know, let's... That's the intended purpose. We have the barrels up here, which do nothing, but, you know, it looks pretty. And most importantly, when I get to attaching the uh, new flywheel cage, it will be mounted on here, which you'll see why in a bit. Open this up. that comes out lights oh it never open, uh, comes out on this side that's it interesting okay let's give it a second push it okay that's better well, undo this okay so we can have it all sitting on the same side Okay, here we have the inside. If you've seen a Rhino Fire, you'll see this looks suspiciously similar because it's the same thing, minus, you know, the area where you would have the um, forks or levers moving uh, forward and backwards for making the uh, barrels move. But internally, it's basically the exact same thing. We have two uh, dual shafted. Uh, hobby grade motors up front with the flywheels here. We have the single motor in the back here. Goes through a gear train and then turns two of these uh, I've gone blank on what the actual official term for it is. is you, you know how uh, what a rapid strike pusher looks like. I've gone blank on the actual name of the mechanism. But it pushes it back and forth. There's a switch here associated with this. Uh, it's a double lobed wheel here that presses in against the switch. So there is a certain point that it wants to uh, end at. Uh, down here, if you mm, look carefully, that is the board down there that controls uh, everything going off at the proper time. Uh, that is also one of the things that I'm going to have to deal with because if I'm doing new flywheel motors and everything else, uh, my cage is replacing this funny thing with uh, two sets of motors. So that's a lot of amperage and there's no way it's going to handle that. So I'm going to be converting that purely to... Uh, signaling. Uh, it's gonna uh, run it's the switches back still for all the proper uh, uh, signaling to tell it to turn on and off, but when it tells it, it, hey, it's time to turn this set of motors on, it's just gonna run through an opto isolator. We have to keep the board functional while at the same time trying to run massive loads of power to the motors. So to that end, we're going to add a little board of our own here with the uh, breadboard uh, shoved into one of the empty spaces on the inside of the shell, and we'll just use that to signal things open. Uh, at the bottom here, we have 190 ohm resistor, and then through the uh, infrared diode end of an opto isolator, uh, I have a small little case of PC-817s that I occasionally use for ex experimental things when I want to isolate circuits. 
So we'll have one of the motor leads go here, and goes through the uh, whole uh, mess here, and comes out here, and then back to the board. So this one side will be for the signaling the um, flywheel motors, and then we'll do the same thing on here for the uh, pusher motor. Here's the next step for our modification of our scooter. We have the printed piece that'll go on the back of the barrel lugs. We'll shove on like that, sit within the cage. We have enough room to put two sets of motors in here along with two sets of flywheels. The only problem is it'll be somewhat limited in space in here. So as a result, I'm not going to solder everything uh, while it's physically in here. I have a spare 100, not 100, have a spare 43 millimeter cage from containment crew. I'm going to go ahead and pop the motors in place, solder all the relevant wiring in place, put all the uh, bits and pieces of uh, shrink wrap on there, and then I will end up taking it out and putting it in, like so. And hopefully, doing it that way, there will be enough room to fit everything in at the same time. If not, well, I'll have to redesign something. After looking at this, I ended up not doing the plan I intended. There just simply wasn't enough room. Uh, how the cage is currently set up, you stick one set of motors in, secure those in place, and you can just slide the next pair of motors in through the other side if you wiggle it in in just the right fashion. So the current design is going to very much end up being a case of be really good at soldering. Uh, in any case, I have everything wired up almost as uh, much as I need it to. I still have a couple spots to solder. And I already have all the polarity determined, you know, handy dandy arrows on my flywheels because it's in a case. No one's ever going to see them anyway. Um, so we'll get that part done. We'll, once we figure out uh, how much room I have in the cage after putting, how much room I have in the shell after putting the cage in, we'll loop all the leads together and start wiring this up the way it should be. And just in case we were wondering, this is what the inside of the um, scooter handlebar unit looks like. Uh, we have the 6C battery tray down here. And just a couple leads coming off of that with the uh, thermistor uh, right there to keep it from overdrawing. Because, you know, people like us are weird and try to run things on something other than the stock double A batteries. Uh, it has the positive negative wires running this way to the connector. And also we have two gray wires coming off the connector. They go this way first to this button here. Then we have another two coming over to this side. And pressing either of those buttons enables continuity for the circuit so that it tells the blaster to start revving the flywheels and make everything go. Uh, for this we will be replacing the tray, the stock tray with enough room for a nice uh, sized LiPo battery. I have a 75C 1300 mAh 3S battery I'll be shoving in there and then I'll have a help spy think of my words correctly. I'll have a uh, voltage regulator uh, feeding power of the appropriate voltage uh, into here just at 9 volts and then I'll have a separate fork splitting off uh, with uh, leads to feed into the blaster proper so that it can draw the full uh, 3S voltage to the various motors. Okay this update we have our um, where's the dust at my battery? There we go. We will have the 
LiPo sitting here, XT60 plug right there. Uh, under here we have the uh, two leads soldered into this uh, plug. One of them goes off to the voltage converter over here, so we drop it, uh, drop down the voltage, voltage regulator, I should say, not converter. The voltage regulator, dropping it from the 3S to 9 volts, and then that in turn feeds that to the main uh, contacts for the blaster and everything else. Then the second set of leads will exit out here, and once I add the last XT60 connector, I will use that for feeding main power into the blaster so that the regular power circuits can turn everything on after you've signaled it. And let's just get this assembled and take it outside finally. Okay, and here we are at the light and we're waiting to pull into the park so we can try out the scooter because, you know, it's me and I do silly things like this. Okay, here we go. Okay, test one of com the completed project, really stupid. <laughs> okay, that works. You'll notice I haven't done anything with the magwell, so there's a chance things could fly out. Same for the sign. That definitely does not work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Most of the way through. Because you can't go wrong with a little overkill. That one's not sticking, but we will make do. Try regular parking lot. It's at least a tight grouping. Oh, that aims up so much. Oh. Try pushing down on the handlebar, see if that helps. A little bit. Okay, so that works. Have to do that to it. And let's clean this up. I mean, 
I kind of feel stupid just sitting back here, but at the same time, <laughs> we're gonna win until we lose. Not enough ammo to matter. <laughs> Cover me! Oh. So much stupid. <laughs> I'll scoot back before. <laughs> Thank you.
Shot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. kills so far, but with socks.
kneecap. Kneecap. Right behind you. Little kid's coming this way. Little kid. Okay, I have a decent number of rounds in there. Where's my socks? I lost all my socks. <laughs>